Hi, we're gonna work on a colder pressure balance valve, which is not putting out any cold water. And after we get this done, we're gonna work on an eight inch center lab faucet, and then we're gonna work on a toilet. Hi, my dad Jim has been a plumber for 48 years. He's a master plumber in Michigan and a C36 licensed plumbing contractor in California. He has saved my wife and I thousands of dollars, but you just gotta watch out. He gets a little bit grumpy when he's giving advice, so don't piss him off. First off, it's going to be the pressure balance valve. I'm going to take out the front. I pretty much got started on this. We pull this out. This is the part that is the, the temperature control. Okay? This is the temperature control here. And inside is the thing that we're having the problem with. This is the balancing spool right here. So that's what's causing the problem. We have a new one. It's going to go in. Right, we're going to insert. It's marked cold. We slide it into the faucet. Make sure it doesn't move. That's in. We put the front on the faucet, which has an up or down onto it. Right here, that goes in. Right there. And it has a plate that goes on the front of this plate. There's a plate that goes on the front, and it says top. That must go to the top. And there's a pin that will line it up to keep it in place. You insert your screws into it. In here. So there, that's what it takes to do that. Looks pretty easy, doesn't it? So next thing is the, the we're gonna work on this lab faucet. Okay, we got the lab faucet. What we have, it's, it's an 8 inch center, but it has ceramic stems in it. And the stem is, here's the old one, which was leaking out through the top. It wasn't dripping, it was leaking out through the top of it. So, then causing problems. So when I change, usually if I change one, I change both. Both hot and cold. And so then they go, you snug them up. I always use a, a socket wrench. I think that works the best because they're usually hex, they're all locked up. And that's really all there is to it there. If you have a water flow problem sometimes, if you're not getting a lot of water out of the cold side or the hot side, sometimes it can be the stems because the ceramic stems seem to slow the water flow. They get, they get lined up and stuff. So, so that takes care of the lab faucet. Okay, we're gonna repair this toilet. Now another thing is, I always use colder parts. Whatever brand of toilet I work on, or whatever brand of faucets, I try to get the original OEM parts to it. The stems were colder on there, and the internal valve for the shower valve, that was colder. So here we're gonna put in a, a flapper because the toilet was intermittently running all the time. So that usually means the flapper's bad which you notice it's a one-piece toilet. Flapper goes in, it's got some ears on it. I'm just gonna get down in here. And connect them up, two sides. Hook up the chain to the... Got the chain hooked up right here. Okay, up and down, that's all you do there. Now, we're also, since we're in here, we're gonna replace this ball cock. And these are a uh, Fluid Master ball cock, which is right here, is the brand name. It's usually the one I use the most. Kohler, Kohler uses it in, in all their fixtures now. I'm pretty sure a lot of companies do. Toto has their own on it. But it's, what the nice feature of it is, is it's got this little clip on the bottom here. And this little clip, you pull it off, and the only thing you have to replace is the top. And I've already loosened that clip up and off, up it comes. You gotta make sure that you get the right level of water, which on the, on the overflow tube right here will tell you if you got enough. And when you push it back in, you just lock it down, which I'll show you on this one. Everything's always interchangeable. It might say it's cold, but it just locks into place. You get it just right, and you lock it in. This one doesn't want to lock on that one, but it will lock. See, it just locks down. 
Make sure your overflow tube is in place. And your fill tube to the bowl is in there and it's ready to go. You see the old flappers got a bunch of sediments so warped a little bit on that. Now, here's another thing I'm gonna show you. The toilet, when it flushes, I'm gonna be down here on my knees, right here, and up underneath the rim, there's about 10 holes on each side. You can't see them, they're right in here. But they tend to, the flow is starting to slow down a little bit, which you can see at the bottom. I usually use a smaller part of an Allen wrench and I get them up in there and I clean them out. You can hear it sounds like you're doing a, like you're at the dentist and they're picking away at your teeth in here. I got one in here, so you see it's in there. See you hear it, you're not gonna break anything. You break something in your bowl. But another thing that's very important is this hole down here. It's three quarter inch hole, it's probably about the size of your middle finger, a little bigger than that. You wanna make sure that's clear because that can get lined up in there. Now, speaking of lying, I discovered something today working on this house that they had a shower door upstairs clear glass door and it's of course it's all lined up and everything else they want to know what can be done well I'm not the door guy but I just happened to have some steel wool with me and I scrubbed that door with steel wool or the glass part of it there's a glass wall and there was a door it was absolutely unbelievable how that glass cleaned right up they couldn't believe it but you know, no chemicals, no nothing. I washed it down with water, kept repeating it, got it cleaned up. And the homeowner just thinks it's beautiful. It looks like the day I went in. So I think I've showed you three different things. Uh, I hope you like what I showed you. If you don't like that, hey, go and ask them, your psychiatrist, see what he thinks. Thank you.